Hey everyone. Um, so today I'm making a video about diving pretty deep into some shadow work. Um, this moon is really calling us to get into our shadow side, figure things out, and then make a change. So basically I'm going to be giving my thoughts on some dysfunctional patterns in relationships, um, lack of self-worth, and the pain of growing up without a father and the effects that it can have on a kid um, from my perspective. So let's start there. I can see in um, a teenage boy who's never had a father, the, um, the choices that are made, the friends that are chosen, the um, everything surrounding that. Some of these kids act out. Now, there was, a, there was a situation there where there's a couple boys who were um, caught stealing some socks from the store. And let's get past the fact that stealing is wrong and get past the fact of um, what the law says. I want to get into the deeper situation of why two boys would feel the need to steal socks. And both of these boys don't have a good home life. Um, they both... I can see the pain in their eyes. They want to... They want to be long. They want to feel accepted. Um... So I think it all goes part with that. Okay, you know, regular Hanes socks aren't going to do it. They want those fancy ones with the, like, double H on them or whatever. I don't even know. But here's the thing. Kids don't know that much about the outside world. Kids pretty much grow up in a fishbowl, okay, because they don't have access to the world yet. And so, where they are in the fishbowl, um, they have basic needs for wanting to feel accepted, wanting to feel cared about, wanting to feel like they matter, like they're part of something. And they don't feel like that in their families. Um, They both yearn for something to fill up the hole that they have in their hearts from not getting that guidance um, from a father. Now, most kids in this fishbowl have daddy to come around um, on the weekend or take take kids shopping. Um, hey boy, yeah, you want some new socks? Cool, let's let's get you some or um, anything. I don't know if it's about the socks. You know, it's it's never really about the item, and I've learned that a lot with my manifesting work. Um, it's not about the item that you want. It's about the feeling that you're going to get from having the item. Now, to these boys, having the cool pair of socks means that they're more of a part of something because that's what all the other kids have. They don't, they don't quite understand yet that 
everybody can be an individual, you know, and that's okay. And maybe not everybody has things other people have, and that's okay. Like, they haven't really gotten to that maturity level yet. They're kids. They want to feel like they belong. And they thought maybe if they had those socks that they'd fit in more, you know. Here's the problem. The law states, okay, there's a punishment for that. But the reality and the morality states anything that the law can do is never going to be more of a punishment than what these kids live on a daily basis not feeling the love and the unconditional support and guidance of having the male role model. Um, and moms can do whatever, but moms don't matter, not to a boy. Um, in all studies shown, it's basically said that the biggest and most important role model for a child is a parent of the same sex. So it doesn't matter if he sees mommy doing this or mommy doing that. Um, gets to the point where teenage boy doesn't want to be at home. That what what's being offered at home that uh, teenage boy needs, you know? That's where you got to get a little deeper here. Um, teenage boy wants to hang with other teenage boys. Um, upon meeting these boys that all do not have dads in their life, I think they've kind of found, like, a little bit of love and acceptance there within each other. Um, not quite sure. I don't really get too deep into what the relationship is. All, all I know is that there's a group of kids who hang out and do things, and none of those kids have a normal, functional, happy home life. And I think, deep down, that's what every kid wants. Whether they're going to say it at that point as a teenager or not, um, they may not. You know, because I don't think a teenager wants to admit that. Or they don't even know their own feelings so well that they can admit that. So when you want to look at a certain teenager and you want to say, okay... This kid's stealing, this kid is smoking pot, this kid is staying out late, um, this kid is hanging out with girls. Um, it's all because they're not getting that at home. They're not getting the acceptance, they're not getting the love, they're not getting the support or the role model at home. Um, or even if the father was outside of the home and still involved, he's sim they're simply just not getting what they need. Um, and some kids may break it down and start crying when you bring this to their realization, and some kids may sit there and try to hold it all in and be that brick wall and say, no, I don't need nobody, you know. But the reality is um, it has left a gaping hole that was never filled. And in boys, it can be different than girls. Um, with boys, you know, it's going to be the acting out. That's what it's going to be. Because they, they don't know what to turn to. They don't know who to look up to. Um, who, let's say, you know, a boy doesn't have father, stepfather, uncle, big brother, you know, there is none of this. Who do they look up to? 
Well, famous people maybe? I mean, they're just going to see that they want the stuff that the famous people have. They're thinking, well, maybe fame, maybe having this stuff will bring me the feeling that I desperately crave in my soul. Um, but they're going to go throughout life realizing that that's not it. That's not going to make them happy. And it's not even that they want to be happy. It's that they want to feel like they're important to someone. And unfortunately, at a certain age, you start to kind of catch on. Okay, you know what? I'm not important to my dad. I must be shit. I don't deserve anything good because my own father doesn't love me. These are the feelings that they're thinking. Um, so to numb that pain, they might want to start turning to weed. Or worse. Hopefully not worse. But um, everybody goes through it. Well, not everybody. You know, they say that dysfunctional families are all dysfunctional in their own unique way but happy families are all the same do the same things um let's you know let's talk about girls who don't have that love and that worth of a father they're probably going to start having sex with boys at a pretty young age because they're not getting any love at home um, and is it, is it fair to judge these girls? It's not. It's not fair. It's not fair to judge the 14-year-old girl who doesn't have anything at home for wanting to feel loved. And unfortunately sex and love are so interchangeable that sometimes we blur the lines between those. Um, let's talk about this young girl here. Let's talk about the young girl who has never had the love or approval from her father and never been good enough in his eyes, never, never had that feeling of worth and value, um, born into dysfunction, and we're not blaming anyone, we're not blaming these parents for their dysfunction, um, we're not blaming them anymore for saying, okay, well, they did the best they could or not, whatever. It's not about placing blame, it's about figuring out why you're having these feelings and experiences. Let's say that your parents didn't know how to love you because they, they, they were never taken care of properly either. Okay, so it's not necessarily anybody's fault here. But then comes along someone like me who pops up and starts questioning all of it and starts learning and says you know what this is wrong this is not okay people are waking up I'm not the only one if you're watching this video chances are you're probably waking up too Years and years and years of abuse, dysfunction, trauma. At some point needs to come to an end by someone who is willing to stand up and say, No, this is not how I'm going to live. back to that girl. If all you're born into, and like I said, as a child, 
especially when there's no social media around. As a child, when you're literally born into a world, you don't know there's so much out there, especially if no one tells you. This girl who never ever got told I love you, never ever got told I'm proud of you, never ever got told you're pretty, never got told anything good. How do you think she feels? Probably not very, not very much of a self-worth. Can you imagine? Can you relate? This is about diving into your side that you don't really want to, you know, put on display for the world. But can, how, how much can you hide the truth and the pain that you carry um, without talking about it or maybe using it to help other people? So do you think it's right to call the 14-year-old girl who's out believing boys who are lying to her, having sex with boys, because she just wants to feel what love is, even if it's temporary, even if it's maybe fake, because a lot of times sex isn't love, and it is a fake form of feeling love, but in that moment you can still feel it. Um, is it right to judge her? Like, I mean, other girls, like, they don't know. You know what I mean? Other girls who have daddy to buy him a new car and take him to justice and take him out for Starbucks and give him hugs every day and tell them that they're beautiful and have that talk with them and, you know, um, be brought up with the knowing that they are so loved and so wanted and um, I try to make my daughter feel like that every day and I'm sure I fail on some days when maybe I'm not as patient as I should be or don't have quite enough time to dedicate just to her because I'm busy wrangling multiple children but my daughter is not going to be looking elsewhere to feel a sense of belonging. She's not going to be looking elsewhere to feel love. She has a dad, and she has a mom, and we let her know every day that she's special and we love her, you know, no matter what. But it's like you kind of start wondering, you know, what kind of sick fucking fucked up people really put all their burden of hatred onto their children like that, you know? And at that point, you want to say, what the fuck? It's not easy, you know? So if you're doing some shadow work this month, um, what it's going to do is kind of bring out some truths and some realizations as to why you are the way you are, why you may have done things in the past as a kid or a teen um, without knowing why. Okay, well I can see, you know what? I, you know, I may have done this because of that, you know, and you start learning the deeper reasons, like you start looking back, and I'm getting, I'm late to the game, let's just say that, I'm almost 40 years old, I'm just now trying to unravel all the fuckery that's been ingrained into me for lifetime after lifetime. I had no option to concentrate on myself as a mother of six. 
um, I trudged along. I trudged along and raised my children on my own. Um, and it's, and you know, now they're all a little bit older. Now it's, you know, it's my time to kind of say, okay, let's, let's handle me now. Let's, let's get your mental health in check. Um, that hole, that deep pain from not having the longing, the, the, the sense of belonging um, to a tribe, belonging, and being an important member of a family, um, a cherished loved one to someone. Those get you, you know, it gets, it gets you. And throughout many years of my life, I have been on different um, SSRIs, let's say Zoloft, uh, you know, because you don't want, you don't want to live your life crying, you don't want to live your life feeling sorry for yourself, you just want to feel good, and I think learning about your authentic soul alignment when you when you're completely aligned and you're feeling good you're you're feeling good you know you want that feeling um normal people have that feeling i think um Some people have to learn that and um, basically remove all the bullshit that society and experiences from childhood and experiences from past lives and experiences from um, even young adulthood. We have to take all that and, and rid ourselves of that and basically start fresh. Um, so I'm learning, well, I'm kind of learning, I'm trying, I want to find this self-worth everyone's talking about. Sometimes I feel like I've nailed it, sometimes I don't. Um, and it's... It's always sometimes a blurred line with me. Um, and I want this to be something for these kids who probably aren't going to pay any attention to this right now. But they're going to have to because you're going to keep on suffering. And I just kept on suffering. Had I known about... Um, meditation and finding your soul and self-healing so long ago would I be where I am now I fucking doubt it so don't be like me start this shit way early um, but you know then you also have to work at forgiving yourself for not knowing what you didn't know until you knew it I didn't know any of this. I fucking sure as fuck wish I did. Gosh. So let's talk about the girl who has never had anyone um, show her or make her feel like she had any value. Um, and here's the, here's the other thing I was learning was When we are born onto the earth, we, we already have, we already know this self-love thing, okay? But coming to earth is this experience that we're supposed to go through here. Um, we look to the outside immediately, you know, love from mother. And I think if you don't have that, I think you're even more fucked up if you don't have a father. Because I think at the very beginning, it's mother, you know, you're, you're looking 
to something outside to feel love. So you're not just going to have it inside, you know. You're looking to the outside, something else. Um, to hold you, to comfort you, you know. Um, and as you're here on earth, so many are looking to the outside to feel the love and to feel the acceptance and to feel the self-worth. Whether they're looking at friends, family members, material objects, members of the opposite sex, everybody's looking to find that love and happiness in something else when really you have to find it inside of you, which is a challenge. So, as I was saying back to the girl, who's been trained, brainwashed, basically her whole life in young adult life. So let's see here. You're shit. You're nothing. You know. What is she going to be attracting as she gets out onto her own? Um, when she's, she's only heard in her head, you're shit. You're nothing. How could anybody love you? You're ugly. You know, whatever. Um, when you have nothing good going on in your head, you're only going to be attracting nothing good. You're going to attract relationships that you don't know any better because it's all you've ever known is someone yelling at you or hitting you or talking to you like shit or not taking good care of you. Um, that's all you've ever known. So, is it normal to feel like shit? Is that just how it is? No. It shouldn't be normal. It should not be normal or okay for men to treat girls or women so bad. But the reason it's become the norm is because that's all anybody knows. So the little boy who grows up watching his parents scream back and forth and watching the dad beat the mom I don't know if he's going to have, like, uneasy feelings about it, maybe when he's a kid, but he may find himself slipping into patterns like that as he gets his own relationship. And if the girl in that situation, I hate my hair, I'm sorry. If the girl in that situation is also fucked up and comes from nothing but dysfunction, she's not going to do anything to stop it. Somebody has to stop the cycle. If you're watching this video, I hope that you can be the one to stop a cycle or to speak up when you see somebody being mistreated. Um, the thing is, when you don't have a good self-worth, you're attracting other people that aren't going to have a worth of you either. So if you just constantly walk around with that running, that wheel of, that wheel of voices in your head that says, oh, you're shit, you're ugly, you're a piece of shit, nobody wants you, you're stupid, you have nothing to offer this world. This is what's playing on and on in your head. And that's what you're putting out into the universe. And that's what you're attracting. You're attracting men who will say that same thing to you because that's all you've ever had in your head. And then if you're lucky one day you're going to have a little faint vision and a snap 
and you're going to try to heal yourself, and you're going to try to find some self-worth. And when you do, for real, I hear that you can attract all you've ever wanted. Real love? Someone to love you? Like, value you? Treat you nice? Um, I am not there yet. I want to be. I'm working to be. I have a lot more work to do. Um, and that's part of diving into your shadow. You have to look at the, you have to, you have to go down some rabbit holes to find out what happened here to make me feel like this or to make me always think this certain way. And it's unpleasant. I mean, it's, it's not going to be like the best thing ever, you know. It's not like you're sitting on a beach sipping fucking margaritas. But if you want the chance to sit on that beach and sip margaritas, like you have to clear out your fucking bullshit so that you can attract good shit. I got so much pain and shit in me, I swear to God, my eyes are black. And I'm blind to so many things. And I remember being so naive and so blind to not noticing um, mistreatment or thinking it's normal. Or thinking it's normal for me to say rude things, too, you know? Um, because when you're in, when you're raised or in environments where it's commonplace for people to just call each other names or scream and yell or withhold love and withhold affection and possibly even get violent, um... You know, you just keep going on. And I think a lot of women get inspired to make this change when they become a mom. Um, the love that you have for your baby makes you want to protect the baby and want better for them. And a lot of times, like, you don't know what to do. You know you don't want that, but you don't know what to do instead. And that's a lot of the problem. And I see, I mean, there's so many single moms. I've been a single mom on and off for 20 years. Um, that's going to be a whole other video. So if you guys want to hear about all the trauma and abuse that I've endured from four different partners that I've had children with, you're going to love that. Um... So a lot of the time, having a child or two with someone and realizing it's not an ideal situation will be enough spark to go ahead and get out of that relationship. But unfortunately, if, if you don't have it inside of you, how can you know something that you've not been told? If you don't have it inside of you and you have no guidance as to what to do to fix everything, the problem is you're just going to attract another shitty relationship. And if you're like me, it's attracting shitty relationship after shitty relationship after shittier relationship. And it's just going to continue. So it's like, why leave the first one and you're just going to go into another shit, you know? But you never know that. You, you never know. You don't know what you're doing. 
and there's very, very little support. Um, obviously, women who are drawn to some of this stuff. I mean, uh, here's like for here's a very rare example. You know, a nice young girl who does come from a nice family and she does think she married a nice man and then man turns into a monster after a year or two. Well, family is going to be stepping in, yanking girl from the situation saying no. Like she's going to have that support, get her out of that situation. Um, and then learn the red flags to never get back in the situation. That's a very rare thing. Um, most of the time when the girls, women are getting into these shit situation relationships, um, it's because they have nowhere else to go. Home life sucks. Parents aren't there for them. You know, maybe there's some people over there doing some drugs. Or, hey, here's this guy who, like, maybe kind of likes hanging around you and having sex with you and maybe buys you food every once in a while. You know, like, you're kind of weighing, weighing out your consequences. She's not shooting for the stars. You know, that girl in this situation doesn't even see the stars as a possibility and until someone can like get in there and say you know what the stars are a possibility um she's never going to see that high she's only seeing this fishbowl that she's in she's not seeing that there's a way to get out of there and so if this is resonating with you please know there is a way out And it's called self-love. And it is a real challenge. But when you start, like let me give you a few examples before I um, close out this video. Try to do some meditations. You need to connect with your yourself. You need to connect with your higher self. You need to feel that completeness and wholeness within yourself before you can attract someone who's going to be complete and whole and grow and heal with you. Because if you don't have that inside of you, it's just more people who are going to treat you like shit all the fucking time. And you might not like hearing me say that, but it's the fucking truth. And I need a dose of my own damn medicine. It's not easy. Because you want to weigh stuff out and say, well, they do this, this, and this, and this. But then they do this, 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 and this. It's a very blurred line. Especially for someone who's never had an example of um, real love. Certainly, someone who really loves you wouldn't treat you bad or act like you're nothing but an inconvenience or a burden on them, right? Or does this, do these people that you're picking not know how to love either because they're fucked up too, but like... When one person has that spark of hope and when one person can say, I'm going to heal myself, I'm going to learn what it means to have self-value and self-worth so that I can flourish and um, I can stop the cycle, come with me. Heal with me. Grow with me, please. Let's do this together, you know? Um, that's when pain, trauma, hurt from all the past lives in your lineage can be healed once and for all. Because once you cut it off and start living a better way, your children, your children's children will not have to deal with all of that. So it's very important to do. Um, and unfortunately, a lot of times it's the woman who takes the initiative. Unfortunately, um, the men don't always go along. 
So then you got to kind of make that decision yourself, too. Um, are you comfortable being comfortable? Or do you want the stars? And that's a hypothetical question. Maybe you ought to ask yourself that. Chances are if you've stuck around this long on the video, you're resonating with some of what I'm saying. So let's get back to it. Do we punish these kids? Do we punish these teenagers who are doing certain things? Or do we try to love them and be understanding and can we develop some programs so that our youth is not as fucked up as we are? Are you going to be the one? Are you going to be the one to open a resource center for kids that might not have something at home? All thoughts. Good thoughts, right? Diving into the shadow. But that's enough for that. That's enough of that for today. Um, shadow work is hard work. It doesn't really, you know, make you happy. So, like, after you do some shadow work, you want to kind of realize that you have made some progress. So, you know, be a little bit proud of yourself for the little bit of progress you've made. And then um, try to stay positive the rest of the day until it's, until it's next time to dive in. But uh, there's going to be a lot of that if you so choose. If you choose to do the inner work, this month's moon cycle is a very good time to do it. So I think I'm up for the challenge and, you know, just working through stuff. Oh, my God. Yeah, so... I hope this video helps someone. And yeah. Off to the next part of the day. Namaste.